This video is sponsored by Win Win Technology, your ultimate flight sim hardware solution. Featuring the Orion Hall test, current and future configurations. Hello valued viewers, I hope you're all doing very well. It's October 2021 and we now have the ability to use the F-14 Lantern Pod for dropping guided ordnance in single player. Until this point we've had to either use multiplayer or use an unofficial mod. The scenario is we've got an F-14 on the ground, hot started but not armed up. We've got waypoint 1 just out to sea here and we've got waypoint 2 at the target which is the Sukumi Cross. At the Sukumi Cross there are three types of targets. Four ground to air missiles, four APCs and four tanks. We're hot started, let's arm up. Armament screen, we're going to put a lantern pod on obviously and we can have four GBUs, laser guided bombs, stations 3, 4, 5 and 6. GBU 10, 12, 16 and 24, 2000 pound, 2000 pound penetrated, 500 pound, 1000 pound. Let's take four GBU 12s. Next, we want to set the laser code on the bombs. Right shift in kilo for kneeboard. We can change the laser code digits within the laser code legal parameters. So I'm just going to change to 1588 to deconflict from RC. Right shift, right alt and one. And I'm going to go to 1588 there. K to remove the board. That's us set up and ready to go. Let's taxi. Okay, now remember it takes about nine minutes for AI Jester to warm the lantern pod up. So at least nine minutes before reaching the target area, we're going to go to air to ground mode and our VDI is going to go to TV because that's how we're going to view the pod from. Now we wait. If the current time is two minutes and 50, it takes just under nine minutes to warm the system up. So I'm going to skip nine minutes now. Laser armed. Done. Right, he's told us the laser is armed, the lantern is clearly up and running. At this point, I'm going to have to assume that you're already familiar of how to use the Jester system and how to use air-to-ground ordnance in the aircraft. If not, please go and watch the other tutorials which lead up to this. So, press A to get the Jester menu up. It'll automatically bring us through to this air-to-ground menu. If it doesn't, just select air-to-ground menu, air-to-ground. Select ordnance and select our GBUs. Roger. Next, our lantern pod is currently using the default laser code 1688. We need to change it to match the bombs on 1588. So, A, just the menu. Next page, set laser code. 1, automatically done. 5, 8, 8. Roger that. Watch him do it. Every time you do a command, it will take a few seconds to actually for him to press the buttons. We've now got the Lantern 1588. The rest of this video we're going to split into three main sections to keep it easy to follow. Section 1. Initial pointing and search functions. 2. Miscellaneous functions. And 3. Actually dropping the bombs. Section 1. There are seven different ways that we can get the teapot pointing in the right direction and acquire a target. Q HUD. Q snowplow. Q waypoint. QF10 map, QDES, direct head control, eyeball. We'll use all of these in turn. So let's start with the first of the seven, Q hard. So, Jester, set Q mode, Q hard. What this does is fix the lantern to the datum dot of the aircraft which is there. So obviously all we need to do is place the datum dot roughly on the target, visually via the HUD. There's the Sukumi Cross. And when it's roughly in position, Jester, We've got two options here. Either we can ground stabilize area. That means the lantern pod will get an area track on that piece of land where the cursor is. And then if we wanted to search for active actual vehicles, use search for targets. Or we could skip the ground stabilize and just go search for targets, which is what I'm going to do now. So search for targets, pause again. He's now asking which type of targets do you want to search for? The best way to understand this, if it's got a bracket active behind it, it's a movable vehicle, a vehicle group. If you choose one with all, then it could be a movable vehicle or a movable vehicle and a static object. A static object could be a static aircraft placed down or a static building placed down or anything like that in the mission editor. And that will encompass that. Or finally, any without brackets that will search for any active and any static object. That encompasses all the different things that he can search for. Note that this does not cover things that are in the map by default, like 
runways, like buildings that are belong to the map and haven't been placed as static objects, like telegraph poles, which are part of the map. So we know that we've got a mixture of vehicles down there. Let's go any active because they're all movable vehicles. A is now um, that happened a bit faster than I wanted. What happens then is, based on the area, he will search in a circular search pattern until he finds targets. You can see he's immediately found some targets here, whatever they are, I think it's a SAM site. When he finds it, he'll tell you what it is. SAM locked, tank locked, and so on. At this point, we can change targets. So if I unpause, just a menu, next target. And it goes to the next one, within the catchment area. He said it was armor, or previous. Okay, I got that captured, Sam. At this point, I would either run in and attack the target, or I would go in into an orbit if I decided I want to have a better look at the target. And that's the end of QHUD. Let's now try Q Snowplow. I'm just going to restart. It's probably the easiest way. Jester, say Q mode, Snowplow. Okay, going Snowplow. The lantern is now searching the piece of ground that is geographically exactly 10 nautical miles in front of us. So if we're facing this way, I go 10 miles, it's searching exactly there. Because of that, it's a bit awkward to use. So if we want to go and find the Sakumi Cross, which is there now, we're gonna have to do a quick turn to the right. It does not matter about your altitude. It will compensate for your altitude automatically. Get correct in terms of azimuth, and now just drive or fly towards the cross, which you can see just coming into view now. At this point, just the menu, search for targets. Uh, any. Switching to area track. Armor captured, got good laser range. And we've got to this point again now. That is the end of Q Snowplow. Next, Q Waypoint, we can do directly from here, so unpause. Set Q mode. Right, three degrees. Q Waypoint. As a Tomcat driver, you'll already remember there are eight different types of waypoint we can have. Waypoint user one, user two, user three, fixed point, initial point, surface target, home base and defense point. If you remember, we placed INS waypoint two on the target, so let's go and do waypoint two. Waypoint two. Give him a second, and he's now pointing at waypoint two. At this point, we would ask him to search for targets, and of course, he'll go and find one of those targets. Now is a great time to show you QDES, a little earlier than I thought, but let's say we're in a position where we've lost the target that we did have locked up. So we did have that tank locked up, if you remember and now we've accidentally uh, moved it off the tank. What if I want to regain that previous designation? We use QDES, so Jester, say Q mode, QDES, and in theory, it should go back. Give it a second. Well, that usually works, but any problem about constantly pausing like this is it does mess Jester up, so I will come back to that in a minute. Next, Q map marker. We're on F10 now, click on map marker there. We put one, I don't know, let's say at the end of that runway there. Give it a name, hello like that. It can be any name as far as I'm aware. We are going to unpause. Unfortunately, using the Tomcat and doing lots of pausing is not a very good thing to do, but we just have to do it. So, Jester, set Q mode, uh, Q map marker. We get a choice because we could have several map markers. In this case, we've got Bullseye, which is obviously on the map, or Hello. It tells you a rough direction, the distance to it, and when it was added. So, yes, please. Roger. Give Jester a second. Going to area track. You're tracking area. And you can see we're on that piece of land. Now let's see if QDES works this time. Let's see if it will take it back to our previous designation. QDES. Come on, baby. Ah, not working. Never mind. Next, we're going to go to the head control methods. Probably save first, but as I've been pausing a lot, I'm just going to restart. We're going to point the lantern in the right place, and we'll just do it with... Uh, why don't we choose uh, waypoint 2. Let him get set up. Now what I would like to do is one of the two uh, track IR or VR head controls. Go here, we go head control. Two options, Q eyeballs or direct head control. Q eyeballs lets me point to the lantern wherever I look around the cockpit. Direct head control is slightly different. It lets me essentially push the lantern around. So if I go left a bit like that, I push it left a bit. If I go right like that, I push it right a bit. So let's try direct head control, ping. I am presented a dot okay, where my track IR right. is looking, and I'm presented a circle where the center of the lantern is. I put one in the other, and I'll get presented with a larger circle. Within that larger circle, I can now push left, watch this, hey, left, or push right, or push up, or push down. Press A to confirm, 
and that's the new pointing position of the lantern. Next, I'm going to ask him to search for a target because I want to try that uh, Q Des for a third time. Search for targets. That one there. Find me a target, please. Contact captured armor. Okay. Range valid. Now I want to show the next method, the last method actually, eyeball. So head control eyeball. Now I'm going to be presented with a small red circle. I'm going to put it wherever I want to be within the limit of the landing pod. So be sensible with where you're going to put it. And then just press A where you want it to designate that bit of land there. Okay, give him a second. He needs time. To, to right. He needs time to actually uh, get it in position. And you can see we're now locked on that position there. And that's the seventh and final way of doing it. I'm just going to see if I can get QDES working one more time. So QDES. Come right, come right. Yeah, work, look. As I said, with QDES, what it does is move from where it currently is to the last confirmed designation. That shows you actually using in a mission scenario all seven different types of initial pointing and then target search and acquisition. Section two, miscellaneous functions. Let's go here. Next page, new functions. We've already seen laser code here. We've also got laser always on. As his default, he will only turn the laser on a few seconds before the bomb impacts. What if you want the laser always on? For instance, if we were marking for a uh, buddy laser or something like that, then we can do that. As standard, Jester will designate automatically. What I mean by that is he's searched and he's found this tank. He will then designate that automatically. We can go in and bomb it now. I can disable auto designation if I want to do that. And then if I wanted to create a designation, I can manually designate by pressing this here. I actually don't know why you would want to do that, but I'm sure there's a good reason. If I wanted to undesignate a currently designated target, this is currently designated, then I can click undesignate here. I can also change the lantern polarity, black hot to white hot by this one here. And if I didn't like any of the settings that are done and I wanted to reset it to standard default, reset here. Those are the miscellaneous functions, other than to say we can show that our laser code is 1588 auto laser and auto designate method set. Section three, dropping the bomb. It's super simple. It's almost the same as it was before, but with a few extra verbal commands from Jester. So let's uh, go and do it. We've already got a target designated. We can go and bomb this now. We also get to see masking as well. I'm not going to bomb from here. I want a nice big run up and I want some altitude, obviously, to get this bomb to work properly. So off we go. Next masking if you remember here is our mask line here this funny uh, line that looks like it's drawn by a child very very cool function i wish you had in all teapots here is a situational awareness cue if the situational awareness cue is within this shape here then you can see the target if it goes outside then a piece of our body is masking the target that's problematic don't worry too much about that it will happen and as long as you turn kind of back on target and unmask at some point, he will retain the target and it won't cause too many problems. So watch, I'll try and show it off now. So off I go, burners on, get some altitude. See the cue going outside of the bottom line, how it goes, or it will do in a minute. I will lose my picture. I've lost my picture because I'm masking it. Don't worry, he will. we will get it back. Turning back in. Generally speaking, try not to roll really hard in case we damage the teapot. Unsure if it's modelled, but they probably will model it at some point, so just bear that in mind. All we're going to do now is fly so that we marry this number here, currently R100, meaning that we need to turn right 100 degrees. And we've got a range marker here, which you'll already know from using the lantern anyway. But don't worry too much, he'll tell you when to go left and right, and he'll tell you when to drop it. Follow those verbal commands. Target is to our right. Master Armon. Oh, <laughs> like RC said. <laughs> yeah, well done. Master Armon would probably help. Okay, you can see R60, R50, R40, R20. In line, whoops, over the other way. Left 13 degrees on the lantern. Try and get it as accurately as you can. Come left five degrees. Pretty much on target. Two degrees out. Left one degree. See the timing cue now dropping down the bar on the right of the... Uh, Teapot, just listen to him ask me to bomb. Okay, we're lined up nice now. Ten seconds, five seconds to drop. Okay, that's it, drop it. Do it then, and only do it when he says so. If you do it beforehand, you tend to get problems. Just follow your usual um, post-launch parameters. I suggest not going too fast at this point, especially if we've dropped from high. We don't want to block the laser with our own body. He will tell you when he's fired in the laser. We just missed that there because we were out of cockpit. 
And that's how you drop the bomb, pretty much uh, as it was before, but with the with the ex with the extra verbal commands from Jester. RC just reminded me one reason why you why you might want to turn the laser on all the time is that you might want not want to drop when Jester wants you to drop. You might want to drop when you want to drop, uh, which differs from when he wants you to drop. In that case, turning the laser on always is a good idea. That concludes our roundup of using all seven initial pointing and search methods, extra miscellaneous functions and just the basic drop method. It's really easy to use. We haven't actually managed to bug it yet, and we can usually break everything because of how we fly. And if you've got any problems with it, enjoy and see you later.